Harry Potter is a British-American film series based on the Harry Potter novels by author J. K. Rowling. The series is distributed by Warner Brothers and consists of eight fantasy films beginning with Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and culminating with Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Without inflation adjustment, it is the second highest grossing film series with $7.7 .7 billion in worldwide receipts, of which seven out of eight films are among the 50 highest grossing films. The series was mainly produced by David Heyman and stars Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint and Emma Watson as the three leading characters, Harry Potter, Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger. Four directors worked on the series, Chris Columbus, Alfonso Cuarón, Mike Newell, and David Yates. All eight movies had their screenplays written by Steve Cloves, with the exception of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, written by Michael Goldenberg. Production took over ten years to complete, with the main story arc following Harry Potter's quest to overcome his arch-enemy Lord Voldemort. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, the seventh and final novel in the series, was adapted into two feature-length parts. Part 1 was released in November 2010, and Part 2 was released in July 2011. Origins Late in 1997 Film producer David Heyman's London offices received a copy of the first book in what would become Rowling's series of seven Harry Potter novels. The book, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, was relegated to a low-priority bookshelf, where it was discovered by a secretary who read it and gave it to Heyman with a positive review. Consequently, Heyman, who had originally disliked the rubbish title, read the book himself. Highly impressed by Rowling's work, he began the process that led to one of the most successful cinematic franchises of all time. Heyman's enthusiasm led to Rowling's 1999 sale of the film rights for the first four Harry Potter books to Warner Brothers, for a reported £1 million. A demand Rowling made was that the principal cast be kept strictly British, allowing nevertheless for the inclusion of many Irish actors such as Richard Harris as Dumbledore, and for casting of French and Eastern European actors in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire where characters from the book are specified as such. Rowling was hesitant to sell the rights because she didn't want to give them control over the rest of the story by selling the rights to the characters, which would have enabled Warner Brothers to make non-author written sequels. Although Steven Spielberg initially negotiated to direct the first film, he declined the offer. Spielberg wanted the adaptation to be an animated film, with American actor Haley Joel Osment to provide Harry Potter's voice. Spielberg contended that, in his opinion, there was every expectation of profit in making the film. He claims that making money would have been like shooting ducks in a barrel. It's just a slam dunk. It's just like withdrawing a billion dollars and putting it into your personal bank accounts. There's no challenge. In the rubbish bin section of her website, Rowling maintains that she had no role in choosing directors for the films. Writing, anyone who thinks I could have veto-ed him, Spielberg, needs their quick quotes quill serviced after Spielberg left. Conversations began with other directors, including Chris Columbus, Jonathan Demmer, Terry Gilliam, Mike Newell, Alan Parker, Wolfgang Peterson, Rob Reiner, Tim Robbins, Brad Silbling, and Peter Weir. Peterson and Reiner both pulled out of the running in March 2000. It was then narrowed down to Columbus, Gilliam, Parker, and Silberling. Rowling's first choice was Terry Gilliam. However, on 28 March 2000 Columbus was appointed as director of the film, with Warner Brothers, citing his work on other family films such as Home Alone and Mrs. Doubtfire as influences for their decision. Harry Potter is the kind of timeless literary achievement that comes around once in a lifetime. Since the books have generated such a passionate following across the world, it was important to us to find a director that has an affinity for both children and magic. I can't think of anyone more ideally suited for this job than Chris Columbus.
Lorenzo Di Bonaventura, Warner Brothers. Steve Clubs was selected to write the screenplay for the first film. He described adapting the book as tough, since it did not lend itself to adaptation as well as the next two books. Clubs was sent a raft of synopses of books proposed as film adaptations, with Harry Potter being the only one that jumped out at him. He went out and bought the book, becoming an instant fan. When speaking to Warner Brothers, he stated that the film had to be British and true to the characters. David Heyman was confirmed to produce the film. Rowling received a large amount of creative control for the film, an arrangement that Columbus did not mind. Warner Brothers had initially planned to release the first film over the 4th of July 2001 weekend, making for such a short production window that several of the originally proposed directors had withdrawn themselves from contention. Eventually, due to time constraints, the date was put back to the 16th of November 2001. Casting the roles of Harry, Ron, and Hermione in 2000, after a seven-month search, Lead actor Daniel Radcliffe was discovered by producer David Heyman and writer Steve Clubs seated just behind them in a theatre. In Heyman's own words, there sitting behind me was this boy with these big blue eyes. It was Dan Radcliffe. I remember my first impressions. He was curious and funny and so energetic. There was real generosity too, and sweetness but at the same time he was really voracious and with hunger for knowledge of whatever kind, Radcliffe had already established himself as an actor. In the 1999 BBC television production of David Copperfield in which he played the title role's childhood years, Heyman persuaded Radcliffe's parents to allow him to audition for the part of Harry Potter, which involved Radcliffe being filmed. Rowling was enthusiastic after viewing Radcliffe's filmed test, saying she didn't think there was a better choice for the part of Harry Potter. Also in 2000, the then-unknown British actors Emma Watson and Rupert Grint were selected from thousands of auditioning children to play the roles of Hermione, Granger and Ron Weasley respectively. Their only previous acting experience was in school plays. Grint was 11 years old and Watson 10 at the time they were cast. Los Angeles Times writer Jeff Boucher, who conducted the above-mentioned interview with Heyman, added that the casting of the three major roles is especially impressive in hindsight. The trio's selection was arguably one of the best show business decisions over the past decade.